This octane render I put on the DAS 3D gallery uh, mostly to demonstrate a plastic effect that can be achieved in octane and there's a, a video there that links to my YouTube channel that it shows you if you're an octane user how to create this material effect. However, the Digital Light Design said they wanted to know how the shape was made. Well the shape itself comes from a little product by Hurra and myself and it's one of these uh, 50 shapes that it's supplied with, this one here, but you can make it in Wings 3D if you're familiar with Wings 3D and that's what I'll show you how to do now. So you need to right click and create a cube, select the entire object, select face and inset. Holding the control key down you want 70% inset and then you want to right click again and intrude it 0.7. So just intrude it 0.7 so it looks like that. Then use the edge tool, select one of these outer edges, press I for identical, G, I again and G again so all these uh, a, a links are going to be linked together by connect tool and it'll go all the way around these bridges around the outside of the cube so I'll just do it and you'll see what happens so press C to connect that right click and bevel that out to the maximum extent so these corners meet together select the entire object and clean up the shape that's a very important step if you don't clean it up you won't get the effect so clean the shape up now and then look at one of these corners press space to deselect everything, select face tool and you're aiming to select the following faces so there's 12 faces to be selected facing this way and then flip the object over and select the same faces on the opposite side until you have 24 faces selected and it looks like that right click again and intrude, hold the control key down and take it down 0.1 select the entire object and press S for smooth twice so that has given the base shape. Now you want these things that wrap around it. So select the edge tool and you want to select say an edge like that. In fact it's probably better to use the vertex tool. So let's select that vertex there then switch to edge and then press I for identical and then L for loop and I and loop and I and loop. Okay that's selected those. Uh, I want some on the inside here so I'll press I and L, I and L and then at this point you can right click and bevel them out. Now if for some reason, I'll just select an arbitrary level of bevel, you fail to get all the faces or loops selected in that go, you can use Control, Alt and Z to step back um, any number of steps, I think to about 50 and you can go back and start adding them in if necessary or you can use this arrow to step back or this arrow to step forward so I can go back to where I've got it beveled so it's uh, so it's quite easy in that respect to go back and correct errors. Right click now and you want shell extrude to create this as a separate object. When that's done you can select the entire object and press S a couple of times to smooth it down. Right, the other bits around the outside are going to be handled slightly differently, similar but different. So select the edge tool and select a few edges like that. Press I for identical and then L for loop until it uh, once again goes around the shape where you want it to and then right click again and bevel. Now unfortunately I can't bevel it as wide as the other loop that I made so in order to uh, compensate for that what I'm going to do at this point is right click and shell extrude and use normal and uh, when I do that I'll just pick a, an amount so, so it's sort of more or less a square cross section you'll see it's created all these extra shapes before combining these though, in order to fatten this up a bit, what I'm going to do is use the plus key to extend the face selection. So all the faces are selected except the ones facing the object from which it was shell extruded and then right click here and use just extrude and normal and that will allow me to fatten that up a bit. So like so. Then I can select the entire objects here, I'll right click and combine them all into one and then press S for smooth and S for smooth again. I'll now press space to deselect. I'll select entire object and select the base object and I'm going to press S to smooth that down one more time and then at this stage you're ready to um, export it. Depending on what software it's going into it might need a little bit more processing so if it was going into Octane for example you'd want to apply materials to these so you'd go to face, right click, right click on material, give it a name and then give it a colour. So let's click on this and uh, 
give it some color and okay and okay and that's created a material there and that'll allow octane to separate it out for rendering in bryce it'll recognize the separate object components and it separates fairly easily so i'll just uh, I'll just go through for the sake of completeness, putting the materials on this. So you'd select these, switch to face, right click, right click on material, call it material two, give that a different color, OK, OK, and then space to deselect entire object, select the inner one, switch to face, right click, and right click on material, call that three, OK, give it a different color, OK okay and then it's ready for export so if we go file export wavefront obj format works for both um, bryce and for octane it's, uh, it's quite a flexible format so we'll just find somewhere to save this and give it a name shape and then go save you will find that depending on the complexity of the shape there should be a little progress bar along here to show the export and then depending on the software it's going into and how you want to apply materials to it it may well need a UV map I suppose it's only taken a few minutes yet so once this is completed what I'll do now is I'll launch UV mapper classic and I'll bring this into this view here while we're doing this and then I'll just check to see whether this has managed to export itself yet it's, uh, it might still be in the process of exporting Oh no, it's completed. Probably Camtasia Studio interfered with the interface a bit there and it didn't show the export progress bar. Right, if I take my shape now and drop it into UV Mapper Classic, which is a little free bit of software, I can do some basic UV mapping on it. So I'll go OK. It says the object has no UV map, so I just go to Edit, a New UV Map. I'll make it spherical. I'll have it on the Y axis. I'll scale the result, spread the face of the pole, so see how that looks, go OK. It doesn't take very long, so that's my shape. It's now been given a UV map. I just need to go File, Save Model, OK. I'll just overwrite the existing one. Uh, ask me if I want to replace it, I say yes. And then this will now go, and it'll have a UV map, which means I can now apply image textures intelligently to the surface of this, which is just a bit of a handy thing to be able to do for Octane as Bryce already has a way of applying image textures even if the object doesn't have a UV map. So there you go. I'll do a couple of example renders to show you what the shape looks like in both Bryce and Octane and uh, essentially that's the end of the video. So I hope, well if I can get back to where I was before, I hope that that answers your question. Cheers now.